Ken Johnson here. He's CEO at Great Wave Communications, and we got some upgrades. So tell us yeah. about the upgrades. So what what's happening um, is on Tuesday, April the seventh, we will begin a project to replace our main satellite dish. <clears throat> Uh, that brings in a bulk of our programming from satellite providers like uh, ESPN, Bravo, National Geographic, NFL Network, Big Ten, Fox, all of those are delivered to us over satellite. So as opposed to most cable companies have about you know, the regular round satellite dishes that are capable of bringing in maybe up to about 10 different, well, they, they, they all kind of monitor one satellite. Uh, we have a larger dish called a simul sat, which is more almost like the round, but you stretch it out, and that allows us to pick up 35 satellites simultaneously. So what we're in the process of doing on Tuesday is we're going to build a brand new dish on the ground. Then at uh, about 11:30, quarter to 12 Tuesday night, we're going to uh, disconnect the existing one, and most of the satellite networks are going to disappear. Uh, we'll take the old dish off, take the mounting hardware off of it, put it onto the new one, and put the new one up, and then add some new supports. Uh, so that's the big upgrade that's going on. Uh, some of the benefits you're going to see from that is additional programming. Um, we're using that to uh, be able to get us more high-definition programming. Uh, and uh, there's sometimes there's interference from aircraft uh, because we're near the lakefront, Homeland Security is doing uh, different sweeps and things and that can interfere uh, with the satellite signal so this will give us better uh, tolerance of uh, some of that interference so uh, the, the dish we have now is 15 years old uh, so imagine using your same desktop computer at home for 15 years uh, so as you can manage the te uh, imagine the technology has improved uh, so uh, we're looking forward to this upgrade to modernize and it's kind of one of the last few pieces as we try to make our move to all digital uh, and refresh all of our core technology. So this is one of the last major pieces. Good to talk about, um, I know because I know I just saw today that one of your competitors is going all digital. So where are we at in that? Uh, as far as uh, the conversion to all digital, um, we have all of the head end ready for that, which is all the programmers, all the programming in the system is already all digital. The only thing we're waiting on is to start an initiative to buy and deploy all the all digital equipment to each of the consumers. And so we're in the process of trying to uh, upgrade some of the programming to high definition. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, once we get to the other side of that conversion, we're hoping uh, maybe in the June time frame to start the conversion and finish that over the summer. Uh, and then we will be purely uh, all digital. We want to deploy all high definition equipment so then we can begin to roll all the networks into uh, high definition variants uh, as opposed to having standard def and high def. Um, and then we'll also free up to add a ton of additional programming probably on our digital and on our premium tiers because uh, the basic package is pretty good uh, but the wholesale cost for that is a little bit expensive and we're trying to keep that down so most of the new programming will go on the advanced tiers so that way it's optional and not every consumer gets uh, roped into that so now from what I understand like 2009 television stations stopped broadcasting in analog and went digital but cable companies were required was it by the FCC or somebody to provide programming for people even if they still had analog televisions that couldn't pick up the digital signals. Yeah, that's so is that, correct. Is that something that's changing now? I mean, no, the, uh, no. Um, <clears throat> what, what happened in uh, 2009, you still had a large subset of old <clears throat> tube TVs uh, that were not high definition or digital capable. And, and you got to remember, digital and high definition are two different things. So yes, when the... Um, the over-the-air broadcast mandate was that if a programmer went to high definition over their digital transport as a cable company because we're receiving it and rebroadcasting it just because it was coming digitally didn't relieve us of the obligation to retransmit it on our systems in a way that would be uninterrupted to the end user so that's what we've done so uh, we've added the high definition but we maintain the standard definition 
um, just in case somebody just has a, a, a regular TV. However, on the other side of our all digital upgrade, while we're waiting to get to a point that we can put all high def equipment out in the field, once we do that, then we'll only carry the HD versions of channels. And on the back of the set top boxes, if you have an old fashioned TV, you just use the old yellow, red, and white wires to hook up to your TV or hook up a coaxial cable and go to channel three. In those cases, the box will actually change the formatting to fit your TV. So we as a cable company don't need to and, do that. And they won't notice any difference. No. Uh, it could be slight. Uh, we tested some this week and uh, what you'll see sometimes is like if it's a high def signal that's being sent to a non high def TV, then you're gonna see it letterboxed because the old right. fashioned TVs are uh, three, uh, was it? Four, three. Yeah, four units wide, three units tall, where a new high def TV is 16 by nine, so it's not the same proportion. Um, so they letterbox the picture, so you have a black stripe above and be below the program, so that way you can see everything on the screen. But it still allows you to watch that programming on an old TV, it's not like it's uh, rendered useless. And it's important because my wife has one of those old tube TVs uh, in her uh, laundry room so that she can watch TV while she's ironing. And uh, so, you know, we right. understand that. People may say, well, I got a digital in the, digital in the living room, but if you have an old TV that you the TV used to garage, have in the living sure. room, you got in the bedroom now or whatever, yep. those have to be considered too. Yeah, exactly. And that's why when we deploy the equipment, we can still go to all high dev, but the boxes will do that conversion to an old fashioned TV. So you use the same box, whether it's going to high def. Uh, there's basically on the boxes, uh, there's multiple outputs. And the most, the two most common is if you have a high definition TV, you use the HDMI, and that stands for High Definition Multimedia Interface. So that connector, really skinny and wide, is designed to go to a high definition, from a high definition box to a high definition TV. If you have an old TV, then you can either hook up to the coax and go to channel three on your television uh, to watch, just like you used to do with an old VCR, or you can hook up with the, what we call the composite, which is a yellow video connector with the white and red stereo audio connectors. If your TV has an input, uh, uh, a line input to it, you can always use that instead. Okay, getting back a little bit to the satellite though. Yes. The, your release says that you can be able to, people be able to watch this on... Um, we're hoping to have, uh, hook up one of our cameras uh, and either put it on maybe channel two or channel four and that way, uh, if you're a night owl or kind of uh, curious, uh, you could tune to that channel and watch uh, the construction in process. Uh, that's our goal. And then the upgrade will last. It'll start about 1130. Uh, we'll probably start taking the dish apart, but may not interrupt your channels till closer to midnight. Uh, once they take the dish off and disconnect all the hardware, then the, ca the satellite channels will be off. You should still be able to watch Cleveland Broadcast Networks, Erie Broadcast Networks. Um, so if you're a Jimmy Fallon fan, we shouldn't interfere with that. Um, channel 6, Channel 4, uh, those should all still be there. Um, then once the new dish is in place and they get all the electronics hooked up, as they tune in satellites, um, uh, they should be able to restore networks uh, as soon as the... Uh, the wires hooked up from the dish to the receiver. Um, also, there's a chance that some of our digital networks, eh, there could be about 40 uh, to 50 of our digital networks. Um, we have kind of a backup dish uh, that carries certain of the digital programming and that may still be available. So if you have a subscription to digital cable uh, with HBO Showtime, a lot of that may still work. I'm not gonna guarantee it. Uh, but our hope is that we'll have that workaround so you at least have, you know, a subset of programming to choose from during the night. And now will programming, the satellite programming, all be gone and then all be back or will it be disappear slowly each channel? It, 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 it'll probably all go away at one time or relatively, you know, within a five or ten minute window. Because basically what they're going to do is go along and just unhook all the wires. So that should be pretty compressed they'll hook everything back up, but they're not gonna wanna tune into the satellite receiver until they do testing. But once all the equipment's put back in and they hook up the wires, they'll probably have to go satellite by satellite by satellite, so they'll probably come back 
far more slowly than what they went out. So people should remember too that if they, if they have HBO or Showtime, try to record the program at a different time rather than that night. Uh, yeah, and and uh, typically like Showtime, HBO, Stars, they're not doing first run programming at midnight right. on a Tuesday. Right. So, uh, but if you happen to think, well, I want to record, sure, yeah, there's shameless or something. Maybe you want to do it at a different time. Yeah, or you know, go to your DVR and say, record all the episodes. How many people does it take to put that up? Um, we're going to have to have a massive crane plus the use of our big bucket trucks. I would say we'll probably have six to eight workers uh, minimum uh, that'll be here. And there, there are some detailed engineering prints that have to go into play because the dish has got to be at the right height, the right tilt, the right, yeah. you know, there's a lot of, there's like what, it's a three-dimensional space that they have to kind of get it oriented in and have it pointing in the right direction and make sure it can see the, really most of the satellites are on the equator. So we have to point at the equator and then tilt the dish so that you know, it's kind of like equidistant to every satellite depending on where it lies on the horizon because some satellites could be over California, others could be over Miami, others over Texas. So you have to have the dish pointed so that they all can see those different satellites uh, correctly. So if you if you grew up in the 60s and your dad was up on the roof trying to move the antenna around, the old it's rabbit. a little bit like that. It's a, it's a little bit like that, just a whole lot more sophisticated. Yeah. So just give me the, the day the, the day and the times that you just yep. got to remember. So Tuesday, uh, April the 7th, we'll be doing all of our prep work during the day, getting ready. Then everybody's going to go home and catch a nap. Uh, they'll get back here about 10, 1030, kind of get everything laid out, get the plan. Uh, then about 11.30, we're going to start to disassemble the existing dish. Cable channels probably go out by midnight. Uh, probably be an hour or two um, getting the new dish, getting the mounting on the new dish, getting that up so that gets us to maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, then they'll start installing all the LNB um, equipment and hooking up the cables. Uh, I figure that's probably going to take a good hour. So I think the earliest that you'll start to see networks come back on is probably around 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And then our hope is, our plan is to have all the programming back by 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, does, do people have to do anything if they have nope. a set-top box? They don't have to shut it off and turn it on or no, anything like uh, that? No, you should be just fine. Okay.